Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 5 of ADU.NET video series. In this video, we'll learn about SQL injection attack and what can cause it to happen. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 1, 2 and 4 of this video series. So what's SQL injection attack? Let's start with an example. Now here you look at a form which is very simple. It has got a text box, a button and a grid view control. Now we want to develop an application in such a way that I type in you know the name of a product you know the name that it starts with for example iPhone and iPads start with IP so if I type in the first two characters or the first character and then when I say get products we want to list all the products which start with that name and display them in the grid view control okay so obviously when we want to do that we we have to use the sql connection and sql command objects and we have spoken about using sql connection and sql command objects in the previous sessions of this video series so let's go ahead and develop you know a web form that is capable of doing this and then later we will see how to inject sql and cause this application to break and in a later video session we'll see how to actually you know solve a sql injection problem Okay, so I have this table called TBL product inventory, which we'll be using for our demo, which has got some sample data within that. So obviously we want to retrieve this data from this table, which is present in the sample database. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So obviously we require a text box control. So let's drag and drop the text box control. So I need a text box, text box control, and then a button control so that the user can click that to retrieve the products and a grid view control and auto format this okay so let's give a meaningful name to the button control let's call this get products all right so let's double click that we get the event handler generated and now if you look at the web.config file I have the connection string already so all we have to do is read that read from that connection string so let's create a variable string connection string is equal to and to read from web.config file we use the configuration manager class so configuration manager dot connection strings off is we need to specify the name of the connection string which is dbcs so let's copy that dot connection string so once we have the connection string we need to create the connection object so using sql connection class con is equal to new sql connection and obviously we need to pass in the connection string to the constructor okay so now we need to prepare the command objects and this is what is tricky now what's our requirement if you look at our requirement you know we type in the first one or two or three letters of a product and I want all the products that start with that letter and if you look at SQL to do that it's pretty simple you know if you say select star from TBL product inventory we get every one of them but whereas I can use where clause and then filter them um, you know using the like operator where product name like you know let's say if I want all the products that start with letters IP I can type IP and use a wildcard percentage so if we execute this query we get that so somehow we want to build this kind of a query and then this part is going to come from the end user okay so how is it going to come from the end user he's going to type that in the text box so whatever the user types into the text box we will have to take that and then build a command object okay so let's say string cmd or let's call it command is equal to okay so what's the query select star from tbl product name um, tbl product inventory where product name like so we want all that so let's copy that and then to that you know we don't want to hard code this we want that to be coming from the user okay so let's take them from the text box control so text box one dot text and then what we do we want to put 
this percentage symbol and the single quote. We want to append that to that text. So percentage single quote and that's it. So that's our command that we want to execute. Now this is very dangerous. We shouldn't be doing this. Okay, in a bit we'll understand this particular piece, you know, where you're building the query dynamically using the strings that user type into the user interface elements. In this case, text box, whatever the user types into the text box. We are taking that and appending that to the command that we are forming here. So we are dynamically building these queries using the strings that user has typed into the user interface elements. And this opens the doors to SQL injection attack. We'll see that in a bit. Okay, so let's create the SQL command. So SQL command CMD is equal to new SQL command. And this class, I mean the constructor of this class is going to take two parameters, the command itself and the connection object. So let's pass both of them. And then we need to execute the command. So cmd.execute reader. It's going to return a re uh, SQL data reader and we are going to set that as the data source for our grid view one control. So grid view one dot data source is equal to whatever the method returns and then call the data bind method. So very simple example, you know, whatever we want, we achieved that. So let's run this and see if it's working as expected. So as soon as we run, it should show the text box button control and grid view control will not be shown because there's no data. So I enter IP. So this is a good user who doesn't want to inject SQL. And when I click this button, it's going to work well. Uh, okay, execute requires. Okay, and look at this error message. It's meaningful. Execute reader requires an open and available connection. So obviously we are calling execute reader method, but we haven't opened the connection yet. So we need to open the connection before we actually call that method. So let's open the connection. So connection dot open. Let's run that. Now enter the product names. In this case, let's enter IP and then click the get products button. So IP get products. We should get the products that start with IP, iPhones and iPads. Okay. So what happened when you entered IP? Okay. This is what is going to happen. So if you look at this command it's exactly the same thing select star from tbl product inventory where product name like and whatever the user types into the text box in this case we typed ip so that is taken and then concatenated with that which will form the query that you see here okay so this is good user he he doesn't have any malicious thoughts you know he he's entering whatever he wants but let's say there is a hacker who want to you know inject some sql into your application just imagine what happens if he types something into the text box into this text box if he types something like this okay if you look at the query it's it's very simple i'm typing an ip and then closing the single quote so what's going to happen? So the single quote is closed here. Okay. So we are closing the single quote and then putting a semicolon, which will be treated as one SQL statement. And then into the text box, I'm typing delete from TBL product inventory. And then I'm using these two, you know, dash dash. And what, what these does is look at this. If you look at the way we are building the command, what's happening? We are saying select star from this table where product name like and whatever the user enters into the text box plus to that we are concatenating the percentage and single quote. So somehow we need to, you know, ignore them. And the way you can ignore them is by inducing these, um, you know, dash dash because in SQL Server, if you remember, if you want to comment something, you use these lines. Okay, so the moment this part, if you look at this part, the percentage and the single quote, this is actually being dynamically concatenated. You know, we are concatenating this to, you know, whatever the user types. So we need to somehow escape that. And to do that, we're actually using the single quote. So when we do this, that get commented there, but obviously we are putting that there. So if the user types, you know, whatever you see here, what happens? A query like this will be formed. Select star from TBL product inventory where product name like, you know, 
the user is typing this one IP single quote so IP single quote and then a semicolon so a semicolon and then what happens to the rest of this this is the rest of the statement that is he he's typing delete from TBL product inventory so this is like another query okay so this entire thing is now within the command object and look at this in the end what is he doing he is concatenating these two why is he is doing this uh, you know en entering this dash dash basically to comment out you know this bit here percentage and the single quote so to comment out that so we are commenting out that piece there so obviously just imagine what happens if this query gets executed if this query gets executed okay it will select something with with products that start with IP and then it executes this delete query delete from TBL product inventory which is going to delete all the rows from that table okay so here we just did a SQL injection okay so let's see if that's what happens now with our application so if you look at this now you know let's select all the rows from the table so we have all the rows let's get rid of this here now if I run this application okay, it's already running so if I if I enter IP and press get products I get them if I say let's say I want all the products that start with letter B I enter that get products I get them so good user no problem but let's say he enters you know maybe B or IP whatever so I want all the products that start with maybe IP and then single quote so this will finish the first command and then I'm putting in a semicolon and then I'm saying delete from TBL product inventory let's copy the table name so that we will we don't have spelling mistakes TBL product inventory that's it and then I'm putting two you know hyphens which will comment out the last bit here this needs to be commented out otherwise we get um, you know a SQL syntax error when this query goes to execute to be executed at the database okay so now look at this when I click this button it doesn't show anything that's fine because there's no product that starts with this name but actually behind the scenes a query like this would have been constructed because of the way that we have written the code and then if I say select star from TBL product inventory look at what just happened all the rows are completely wiped out so this is nothing but SQL injection and why is this happening this is happening because of the way that we have coded this application because of the way you know we are building these SQL queries you know building queries like this we are opening up the doors for SQL injection attack so you should never ever dynamically build SQL queries by concatenating you know whatever the user types into the U into the UI controls in this case text box okay at least we should be doing some sanity check here okay is he trying to inject some SQL and the best way to actually solve the SQL injection attack is by using parameterized queries or stored procedures which we will be talking about in the next session of this video series so that's SQL injection attack very simple on this slide, you can find resources for ASV.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.